Welcome back to Falling Fox Gaming, everybody. I am your host, Blaine, and today we're playing some more Baldur's Gate 3, playing as Kiliax, our Silver Dragonborn Oathbreaker Paladin. Now, when we left off, we had pretty much finished up the Arcane Mage Tower thing here, and I have a couple of things to say about it. First, I was going to do a summary and kind of explain all the notes and lore and stuff that I found in here before continuing on today's episode. I'm going to hold off on that. And the reason for that is that we actually compiled everything and we found out that we're missing some key pieces of information. Right now, according to everything we've collected, this place really has no relevance to anything else we've been doing with the exception of there might be some kind of connection to some Alayazel stuff. And so I'm going to wait until we have a few more pieces of information that are relevant to us to connect it to the Arcane Tower and then I'll do the lore catch up. So I hope you guys don't mind waiting a little while for that. And then the other thing I want to do is I actually want to fight Bernard and his minions up here. Now it might seem pointless to pick a fight for no real reason, but honestly it took a very long time to get through this place, so I kind of want the XP and I'm hoping there's some loot. Now we got a couple of items that are okay and they're probably worth the reward I guess of coming through here, but I don't know exactly if I'm happy with it. So what I think we're going to do is, as far as I can tell, Bernard has no story impact, so I think we're just going to kind of try and defeat these guys. Now one thing that caught my eye is they have anti-magic susceptibility which means they are going to either collapse or be weakened by anti-magic. And it just so happens that at the base of this tower on the backside in that little gardeny area back here, there's a tree that has like these like petal things that make anti-magic. So I'm going to go collect those and bring them back here. And I think we're actually going to do a long rest first, uh, mostly because we're pretty much out of spell slots and I want to make sure that we're ready to go in a difficult fight or a potentially difficult fight. And it looks like a starring wants to talk to us, so let's see what he has to say. There you are, my friend. <laughs> and let's just see what he wants. Are you now? <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep, darling. <laughs> Thankfully, I've had my needs met this evening. I found a bear. He took a little of my blood. I took all of his. <laughs> Where did you find a bear down here? That's a good point. I mean, I think he was a bear. Big head, four legs, hair that gets stuck in your teeth. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> whatever it was, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's nothing compared to, well, uh, other things I could be dining on, but significantly better than the rats and bugs Cazador served me. Well, that's a good question. I'm asking him, blood is blood, isn't it? Not at all. Blood is life essence. And some creatures have so much more life than others. Casador gave me just enough to keep me, well, alive, for lack of a better word, but never more than that. Still, that was the past. I'll never have to grovel for him again. Yeah, well, it's some encouragement. Exactly. I can be better than him. Stronger. More powerful. More... Oh, you meant be kinder. Pet bunnies, that sort of thing. I have no objection to being nice, of course, once I have the power to bend others to my will. <laughs> yeah, let's just go for free now, that's what matters. Is it? What good is freedom if I'm always watching the shadows? No. I'll be safe when I'm powerful enough to grind Cazador into the dust. Powerful enough to do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> Power corrupts. You do well to remember that. Yep, that's a good point. Oh, I hope so. A little corruption sounds fun. I spent centuries as the victim of a corrupt man. It was the Mind Flayers that plucked me away from that. They gave me a gift. The strength to take my own freedom. I'm embracing this power. You should too. All right. A little bit uh, megalomaniac, but sure, why not? Oh, the owlbear. You recognize the feathered creature. It's the owlbear cub you rescued. Oh man. I usually have a potion on animal speaking. Yeah, let's give him a piece of food. The cub's eyes lock onto the food in your hand. Heck yeah, buddy. You're always welcome here.
The creature gulps the food down. It seems he hasn't eaten in some time. Dude, I got tons of food. Stay here. Careful. Once that thing's eaten through the camp, it might start looking at you hungrily. Aw, oh, Shadowheart. <laughs> I'm not chasing after it, if that's what you're thinking. Your fault. Putz. Okay, so now that we have the bloom, I have to think about this. We only actually have one of the flowers, so we can only put it in one location. I was hoping to have a couple of them to put down next to these animated armors to see what happens. And we don't really have that option. So, looking at this, I'm a little scared of Bernard, honestly. So, he has multi-attack static discharge, so he can multi-attack while under the effects of static discharge aura. So apparently he has some kind of aura effect that he's going to do that's going to give him multi-attack. He also has overcharge which can stun us, an AC of 19, and 70 hit points. Honestly, <laughs> just not feeling this. I, I'm going to try this fight once. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and not cheese the fight, but we're going to kind of, we're going to lower this. We're going to go down here and we are going to drop this flower bloom thing right here in the elevator and i hope that the little armored guys they come down here and get weakened by the aura now i don't know if it disables them which i'm hoping is what it does or it just weakens them but we're gonna put it in the elevator and hope that's what it actually does well let's just do this let's just all go over here and hide like cowards and then move gale back a little bit further than that because gale should just never be involved and then move Shadowheart over just a little bit and then like usual we'll have Astarian go pick the fight and see if he can do it safely okay having found a fun little spot I can actually hide right here with the sneak attack I still only have a 75% chance with advantage of hitting him that terrifies me beyond many many respects that means on a normal shot we're gonna have a much lower chance to hit this guy okay so the roaring thunder arrow has a chance of knocking him out the window okay so turn base mode on I almost forgot to do that we're gonna try that because if that works that would be absolutely amazing to start this off Oh, I hope this works. <laughs> oh, he didn't, didn't kill him. Oh my goodness, that is actually terrifying. Okay, after a frustrating amount of times, I finally got him out the window where he didn't instantly heal as soon as he hit the ground. I don't know what it is with this fight, but I kept knocking him out the window and he kept taking like 40 damage and then he would instantly just get back up and heal. But it didn't happen this time, so we're going to roll with that. Now, we have a couple people here that are able to maybe do something to hurt him. He has 30 hit points left, so I want to make sure we continue to engage him. So that way, hopefully, we can kill him before he heals. Now, Gale has the best chance. He has Magic Missile. He can cast that at level 3, so that's 5 projectiles. That is going to do anywhere from... It says... 10 to 25 damage let's hope it's closer to the 25 damage mark now the thing is he does have a couple boosts to his um magic missile so this could potentially be awesome <laughs> he's down to four hit points okay now what else can we do um i don't know if we can actually hit him from these windows or anything i have an idea we're gonna do feather fall. Can we make this a heroic Kiliax moment? Kiliax can run over here, or, or, or walk slowly. Can he jump? Oh my goodness, he can jump down here. This is awesome. Let's do it. <laughs> That's so cool. And then he gets to attack. <laughs> That's great. Salute him really quick. Light of creation. He's got a, a hellbird. Well, in any case, we're gonna take that because that's amazing. Let's um let's get a starion out of here. Now, I actually really like that type of fighting. So that was a well thought out plan that worked out well. I don't even consider that a cheese because we weren't stealth or anything. We just ran away after we attacked the guy. Okay, so they don't even seem to be hostile. That is really interesting. 
Okay, so seeing as that felt pretty simple, I think we're just going to go ahead and try and take out these animated armor now. Now, I'm not sure of what capabilities they have, but I'm not going to take any chances. I'm just going to go and hit hard and hope it's enough. Okay, so it did start combat automatically. Good. That's what I was hoping for. And then we can go descend and see if they chase us down here. Now, I am a little concerned with them chasing us and whether or not they're actually going to chase us or if they're just going to try and shoot us. So I'm going to try and run back over here. Seems like we can run quite far in comparison to this tower. We have one action left. Let's just try and dash again. I'm not, I don't want to hide because if I hide, they might actually stop following us and I actually want them to come down here to the elevator. All right, let's end the turn there. There we go. Now they're moving. That's what I'm hoping for. Come on, come down here. Now they might be a little slow, so they might not be able to get here on the first turn. Okay, someone's able to hit us from up there, which sucks. That's what I was worried about. So let's move him more over. Can I move him, like, up against his bookcase? Now, I hope they can't attack us through the bookshelf. Might be able to, though. Uh, what? They're dashing through. Now, hold on a second. Do they not have that weakness anymore? I don't get it. So he says he's incapacitated. What about him? I don't understand why they were able to do that. So disengage. Dash. Let's get over here. Let's see if we can move that flower a bit. Here. A little more over. There we go. So does that incapacitate all three of them? Yes, okay. Yeah, I wonder why that didn't happen. So their dash action kind of canceled that out. That's really interesting to know. I would have never known that. Okay, now Kiliax and Shadowheart are stuck in initiative. So that means only Gale is still a secret. Which is perfectly fine because Gale is the one that I actually want to stay a secret. Because he's the one that can hit hard right from the opening move. Guaranteed. And there's a couple of them. I don't want to destroy the flower. I don't know if I can. So I'm going to try doing any AoE that doesn't actually do that. So yeah, we're just going to stick with Magic Missile. There we go. Now I can hit more than one guy. It's a new one. Oh, no, no, hold on. Level three. One, two, three. Can I get that guy? Four, five. Yeah! That was a good hit. All right, and that was actually super easy with the flower here. So good tip is to get this on the elevator and just kind of trap them here. So they basically couldn't fight back. They just died very slowly, and I do mean slowly because unfortunately both Kiliax and Astarian missed pretty much every single one of their attacks. Gale is one that is a superstar here and used a whole bunch of spell slots to cast Magic Missile to take them down. Okay, so we're just going to put the flower in the chest here and hopefully everything is good after that. Yep, so putting the flower in the chest actually seems to do the trick. It gets it off us, and it seems to be working still, so we have access to it later. And then when we leave the zone, it just kind of the effect wears off, so we're good. So I would consider that a successful completion of the Arcane Tower, at least for now. Now, like I said, there's some story bits about this place that I'm going to go over later, but for now, we're going to hold off until we get a little bit more information because we're missing a couple key details, I think. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Seeing as we actually took a long rest, so I actually have to go back to Auntie Ethel and buy some more of the Hill Giant potions. I'm going to do that, and then I'm actually going to fast travel back to the Salunai Outpost and just head up this way and try and see if we can get to the Mykonid Colony from over here. I don't really want to go down into this like sketchy village yet because I feel like we're just going to get attacked, and I'd rather talk to the Mykonids to get the story of what's going on down here first. Okay, well, there's a problem with my plan. There's this... uh this little like wobbly thing that I've kind of forgot about here at the Saluna Outpost and we have to figure out how to disable this. Now, I can technically attack the Moonstone it looks like, but I don't really want to do that. I feel like having some kind of like guardian thing leading up to the like from the Underdark to the surface is probably a good idea. So I think what's better is let's see if there's a way that we can like disable these things maybe. Oh wait, hold up. Actually, if I scroll over the eyes, I can attack them. Wait, can I blind them? Ooh, this is interesting. Hold on. We got to open this door. Do we have a key? No key, but there's a lever right here. So let's see if that works. Okay. Okay. I can shoot the eyes from back here. 
So what we probably need to do is turn base mode, attack, and then run out. Okay, turn base mode, just simple shoot. And then we'll do the same thing with a Starion. Simple shoot. Feel their anguish. And then yes, Starion, run out here, check the Minotaur that died. Yeah, see that's what I was saying, we know that it deals damage, I forgot about that because it killed the Minotaur. Do some looting on the way because the Starion has the extra movement to do so. I'm dumb. For whatever reason, I was thinking that Gale had Misty Step. I don't know why I was thinking that, but that's what I was thinking. It's because I have the amulet of Misty Step and I'm not wearing it for some reason. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, so they just shoot randomly. And it did five damage, so that's not terrible. Not great, obviously, but that's better than what it could have been, I suppose. And let's just get everybody out of there. All right. And it seems to be the end of it. We're not in range anymore, so they don't go off. We'll exit turn base mode. Move everybody over here. Did the eyes light back up? Yep, and the eyes go back to normal. Okay, so that's a neat little puzzle. Good to know. Kind of sucks we took some damage, but a little bit of damage is much better than a lot of damage. Making our way downtown. Oh, that is a dangerous area to be. I'm going to blow them up. I hope it doesn't bite me later, but... I don't want to run through a bunch of, like, what is it, flame stock, fire stock, what it is, torch stock. That just seems like a bad idea. Alright, so let's see if we can be friends with the Myconids. You are swallowed by a chorus of turbulent music. Through one creature sing many voices. The harmony of an entire collective. Sovereign, he has come. He is here. The choir fades. A single melody rises above the others, brassy and commanding. I am sovereign. You see a vision, your lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The sovereign is threatening you. State your purpose. Hello, friend. I'm your friend. Oh, I like this. Um, tell the truth about the parasite. I only seek safe passage in your search for treatment. Yeah, so I am going to go ahead and go with that. I like the idea of telling the truth about this. So the thing with myconids is they are, I believe they're good overall normally. And most people know that. They only harm people that mean to do them harm. So I'm going to say that I'm actually just trying to get through this area and trying to get rid of this parasite fungal roots weave through your mind seeking your true intent then the sovereign drones a new melody cautious but welcoming i can mend neither skin nor spirit but we still might commune descend to me let us speak in flesh the persistent music coaxes you forward the Sovereign expects you. Oh, my canids are so cool. All right, so we're good to travel through here. Perfect. So, my canids, they seem to be having a rough time of it. They seem to have lost quite a few. That's unfortunate for them. All right, and I think that is where we're going to leave it off for today. When we come back, we will explore the Mykonid colony in more detail, and we will see if they can offer us anything in the way of getting rid of our tadpole. Now, I hope you guys are enjoying this. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.